Hello everyone, welcome to this Tuesday, September 13th. I'm Sister Mary Elizabeth from the Cecil Working Committee and I would like to welcome all of you that are joining us today. On this day, the Church celebrates St. John Chrysostom. St. John Chrysostom lived from about 347 to 407. Born in Antioch, he was trained as an orator. In 374, he joined a community of hermits, but returned to Antioch due to poor health. In 386, he was ordained and appointed preacher for the bishop. Famous for his eloquent sermons, he was named Archbishop of Constantinople in 398 and began to pro to pro in pro began a program of reform. Uncompromising in political and an ecclesiastical affairs, he made enemies who eventually contrived to have him exiled. To avoid an upra uprising, John was taken away in secret, but died on the journey. After his, de his death, he received the title Chrysostom, Golden Mouth, in tribute of his powerful preaching. He's a patron of preachers. So on this day, let us ask St. John Chrysostom to pray for us and to pray for the entire church. First reading for this day is 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12 to 14, then verses 27 to 31. Just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one Spirit we were all baptized into one body. Jews are Greeks, slaves are free, and we were all made to drink of one Spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. And God has appointed in the church first apostles and second prophets, third teachers, then deeds of power, then gifts of healing, forms of assistance, forms of leadership, various kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? But strive for the greater gifts. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. First reading today, Paul is saying that just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is in Christ. He's giving the example of the human body, different parts, different members, but all working towards one end to make the entire body work. The same is the church. There are apostles, there are prophets, there are leaders, there are preachers, there are servants, there are people who sing, clean, uh, are very artistic. There are different members but we all belong to one body. And that's why we should not compare ourselves to others, compare the gifts that we have received, compare the graces that we have received from the Lord. In our parishes, in our communities, in our groups, we are all different, but we are all one, working for one good, one de final destination, it is heaven. And we are one body, and Christ is our head. And Paul here makes it clear that all people do not possess the same gifts and the same graces. We do not possess all the graces needed, all the gifts needed. We do not possess all the graces that our community and our church needs. That's why we need to be together. Uh, Paul and saying, strive for the greater gifts. And in chapter 13, he would tell us what the great gift, what are the great gifts, but what the great gift is. And I can, and I can say the great gift is love. It is love that will unite us as one people, 
one heart, one body. We need to love each other. So when we love, we stop competition. Competition do not exist when we live in love. Responsorial Psalm today, Psalm 100 says, Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into His presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is He that made us. We, were, we are His. We are His people and the sheep of His pasture. Enter His gates with thanksgiving and His courts with praise. Give thanks to Him. Bless His name. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and His faithfulness to all generations. His faithfulness to all generations. The Lord keeps His faithfulness to each one of us. And the Gospel from St. Luke, chapter 7, verses 11 to 17. Jesus went to a town called Naam, and His disciples and a large crowd went with Him. And He approached the gate of the town, a man who had died was being carried out. He was his mother's only son, and she was a widow, and with her was a large crowd from the town. When the Lord saw her, he had compassion for her and said to her, Do not weep. Then Jesus came forward and touched the pallet, and the bearers stood still. And Jesus said, Young man, I say to you, rise. And the dead man sat up and began to, began to speak, and Jesus gave him to his mother. Fear seized all of them, and they glorified God, saying, A great prophet has risen among us, and God has looked favorably on his people. This word about Jesus spread throughout Judea and all the surround, surrounding country. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. People were in awe when they saw the miracle that, did, that Jesus performed. Jesus had compassion on this woman who had a, a son who had died. She was a widow. Jesus had mercy on her. And just to understand a little bit Jewish tradition, it says that this woman was a widow, so she didn't have a husband anymore. She had an only son. So the son took his dad's position, his dad's position to take care of the family, to take care of his mother. So with a son, dad, she would be alone. She would be begging on the streets. But Jesus, by resurrecting her son, gave her life and joy again gave her something something to look forward gave her meaning to live jesus is the one that brings meaning to our life he is the one that brings joy to our hearts even if we feel like this widow this woman that lost meaning lost life lost all that she had to live her son Jesus has mercy on us and give us new life. So on this day, on the meditation of His sacred word, let us ask Him to have mercy on us, to come to our aid, and to give us the virtues and the graces that we need to live. Amen. <laughs>